All right, and welcome back. So I know it's been a while since I created a video for my channel, but hey, I've been busy starting new education and, you know, just real life caught me up. So I'm trying to get back creating more videos for you guys here on my channel. So this video, we're going to talk about the newest, almost ready to ship Flipper Zero competition. So what will we see this year from MasterTech with the M1 multi-tool? Now, the M1 multi-tool been having a long journey so far, right? We've been seeing a lot of people talking about this is a scam, this is not a scam, so on. We have number 30, uh, sorry, 23, no, uh, yeah, the update number 23, I'm going good here, right? So um, it's it, it was released the 12th of August, and they are talking about that the production update, the assembly line is almost ready. Now, usually I do these updates whenever the updates come out here on Kickstarter, but I just haven't had the time and really sorry for that. And we can see the assembly line is actually going pretty well. They're showing us a lot of different devices here, which is the, um, this one here, the multi-tool, the M1 master tool multi-tool, which was advertised a long time ago. Now we are looking at a device right here. Let's just open this picture. And just look at it right now. Now, compared to the earlier images that I showed you, this looks like a really more professional designed mold design. We're looking at a polished version of plastics. We are seeing, you know, professional design and it looks really good. So I see this device as an actual competitive for Flipper Zero. And we will see this device. Will it actually take a place? Because it has the onboard installed Wi-Fi module on it already, which is going to create like a difference to the Flipper Zero. But maybe, maybe people like putting the GPIO, GPIO pin boards in the Flipper Zero as extensions, and then they feel a bit more, ah, this is more fun in a way. It's like an add-on. It's like a gamification of it. Will this device actually create the competition? Now, I'm not really sure about that, but we are looking at it right here. It looks pretty good. Okay, so let's take another image right here where we have it turned on. Just zoom in a bit. And it, it kind of, you know, the display itself is kind of the same graphics like we see if you're zero, uh, probably for saving, you know, the actual battery on it. And I'm not really sure what we're seeing right here, but it talks about total access points, I guess. One called dark side with BSSI beam and the power and the channel and the, the auth mode. I'm really looking forward to having this device and creating some videos about it so we can talk about how we can compare it more to the Flipper Zero. Now, going down here, we're looking at a device which looks pretty well assembled right now. Let's open this image here and look at it. We have the board. Um, we can see that it actually supports a um, micro SD card which is of course necessary for this to work. We have a 2100 milliamp battery, which is, I guess, okay. And we're looking at a device that, you know, seems like it's been fitted roughly, more or less perfectly into this box that they created. And I think this is actually a pretty good device, which is gonna be fun to use. Looking more on it, they are talking about that shipping and logistics, finalizing the strategy and so on. And it seems like that they are, um, what is it called for baggage and European Union want to highlight the recent regular change that could potentially influence our shipping schedule, new EU cybersecurity requirements on the radio equipment directive red coming to effect the 1st of August 25. Okay. So maybe that is true. I don't know. You know, I, I, even though I do live in Europe, but I, I don't look on every single, you know, um, directive there's created because it's just a lot of them always. Um, yeah. So I guess we're going to see this device this year. I think the, 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 um, shipping and logistics plan was shipping this year, actually. And let's look at the comments. No, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 
there's still people moaning a bit about the, yeah, I understand, I understand, you know, it, it's just a lot of, a lot of waiting time, but that is how Kickstarter works. You know, sometimes people run into, you know, problems and this is the way it is. We're probably looking at a new update pretty soon because they're creating updates around 30 through 40 days. So it should be here very soon. Um, I'm really sure to say more about this actually. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we're going to look at this device as a flipper serial competitor and and I know a lot of you hard fans of Flipper Zero out there are probably going to say, but there's no competition. Flipper already won. And I really probably all argue with that. Um, so think about the other way around. If this device came first, would it be better? And would Flipper Zero then have not created any competition? I would say the device that came first would probably be the one to be hard to mug off the pedestal because it is the first device and the first device is always a bit more, you know, legacy wise than the first one and it kind of got some of the base functionality going on and then other companies does the same thing, create the same device um, and the competition is not really there anymore because the community and the Flipper Zero have been backing the device so much. So what we're really seeing on the Flipper Zero part is that people are creating um, lots of firmware and different kind of hardware and GPIO uh, exchange boards for it because it got some limitations and those limitations do spark people's interest for creating more different interesting, you know, GPIO pin exchange boards and more interesting software but there is a limitation, and this is what people don't talk about. It's just the actual hardware in the Flipper Zero is trash, okay? It is so bad. Even this right here we're looking at right now, Nothing is still pretty bad, but it's better. It's still not good enough. You can take any, any small Raspberry Pi board, and you have absolute more power, okay? Okay? Just take the Raspberry Pi uh, mini ball, right? One of those small ones. You, you can actually get it with like multiple CPUs and so on. So uh, it's just the way it is. These devices are handheld, made for consumer level functionality. You can click a button. You can go up in menus. You don't need to configure configure anything. You don't need to have any you know extreme understanding of what's going on the on on the backside. You just basically need to be able to click a button. And this is why these devices are popular. I understand that they're interesting, and I'm going to create a lot more content about this device. But I'm going to be completely honest, you know, I'm not a fanboy of these devices. I do love creating devices like this. I do love creating stuff like that. I, I think it's fun. I think it's interesting, but I'm also honest and realistic about it all. It is not a wild one-on-one -on -one hacker device that can, you know, put stuff down and get you free gas and turn off all the monitors in the computer if you stall. Some of them will work and probably some of you have some wild stories about it. And, and, but, you know, I'm going to beg the difference. There's no one ever used a Flipper Zero for a real interesting hack that, you know, put something down, you know, it's not really happening. It's a, it's a fun tie and it's still a fun tie. I would never just be honest about it, but I really like it. I like toys. I'm going to create content about it. I really hope you're going to follow and watch it. And once more, you know, I'm really sorry I haven't created a lot of content because I've been so busy, you know, with starting new education, cybersecurity in Denmark. And, you know, I have a lot of stuff to do, creating a lot of material all the time. It's a brand new education. We just started like a few weeks ago. So I'm really happy about, you know, being a part of the team for creating that new education. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to, you know, this semester and how it goes to the exam uh, for the students. So just want to say, you know, have a really nice day out there, you know, and, and do check in on my channel again. And sorry for not creating that much content recently. I'm going to try and push more out, you know, and, and find the time to create these small interesting videos to update you guys on things that I do follow along. So again, see you out there. Have a really nice day and do consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me greatly. See you.